Hey everybody, welcome to identifying exponential functions from a table. So this is a continuation of several other examples that we've done where we've looked at a table to see if it's a linear um, equation or a quadratic uh, by looking at uh, differences. So uh, we're going to continue with this idea, but we're going to look at a table and to determine whether or not a table of data represents an exponential function. So uh, we have two goals today. Number one, uh, students will be able to determine uh, if the table of data represents an exponential function. Uh, and if it does, um, we'll move on to the second part. Students will be able to find an equation using regressions on the graphing calculator. So um, I'll make a separate video for that of how to use your uh, TI-84 to create a, an exponential line or an equation exponential regression, just like we did with linear um, regressions. Okay, so um, the table says, yeah, two functions, one linear and one exponential. I did not put the, well, actually, I did put both of them in there. Okay, so I want to take a look at this first table here. And I really want to uh, emphasize something. And if we look at this, if we look at the differences between these two tables, you can see that one of these appears to be changing at a constant rate. So if we look at f of x, what I highlighted in yellow, you can see that the change or the difference every single time is a change in plus 15, right? So there's a plus 15 here. And if you also look at the x values here, this should be, uh, we made a little mistake there, 35, not 25, right? So it wouldn't be a function, so that should be a 35. We see the x is changing by plus 5, okay? So the x's are changing by a constant. The f of x or y values are changing by a constant. So that, that yellow line is a linear function. Remember, if we take those differences, for example, so if we take... 45 minus 30, we get 15. If we take 60 minus 45, we get 15. And so what we're doing is we're taking the next f of x value and subtracting the previous one, right? So 75 minus 60. Okay, and you can see that when we take these first differences right after the first difference, we have something that's constant. So that means it's a linear equation. So what happens if we look at the, the red graph here? And, okay, we, we start looking, and, and hopefully you notice that uh, from here to here, it's a 200 difference. Uh, there's a, a 240 jump, and then over th almost 300, and then it starts to get quite a bit larger. So the numbers are getting larger here. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if I take the first difference or a second difference, am I going to get a constant number? Now, I will tell you that if you take enough differences, maybe 15 differences here, you're going to get a constant number because there's only going to end up being one number left. So um, because the numbers are jumping so high, I might not consider using the differences. Uh, taking uh, uh, consecutive differences like that are great for, uh, for polynomials of like first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, like that. But what happens if we deal with this idea of exponential functions? So here's what we can do. Instead of looking at the differences, we're going to look at ratios. So if we look at ratios, that's our key. Ratios, fractions. Okay, so here's what I mean. So instead of subtracting, the next number um, by the previous number, let's look at 1,200, and we're going to go ahead and divide that by 1,000, okay? And if you look at that, you should or will get 1.2. So hopefully if we continue taking these ratios, let's look at the next set of numbers. Let's look at 1,440 and divide it by 1,200, okay? You get 1.2. Okay, if you take 1728 and divide it by 1440, right? The next difference in line divided by the previous, not distance, the, the, the next in line for the y value divided by its previous y value, okay? You get 1.2. And I'm going to tell you that that trend will continue. So because, because the ratios, because all the ratios... are the same, g of x is exponential, okay? So in order, oops, 
in order to determine if a table of values is exponential, you are going to divide, you are going to take the ratios. And if all of those ratios are the same, you know you have an exponential function. So this is uh, Mr. Bennett. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to type them below, and we'll see you next time.